Dave Burkett here, Detroit Free Press, uh, live from my home office, uh, like everyone else working from home these days because of the coronavirus. And uh, big news of the morning, Darius Slay trade finally goes through to the Philadelphia Eagles for two draft picks, uh, third round pick and fifth round pick coming back Detroit's way. The Lions now have four of the first 85 picks. Uh, they have their own pick at number three in the first round, plus second and two third round choices now. And uh, look, uh, I think anyone out there that's followed anything about uh, you know, this season, Darius Slay, his future sort of had come to the realization that Darius Slay was going to be moved um, here before long. And I didn't know if it was going to happen before the deadline, before the, I'm sorry, before the start of the league year Wednesday, uh, shortly after like it did or, or before the draft. But, you know, I've been saying since October that the uh, the end was near for Slay in Detroit. And, uh, you know, I, I did a little radio hit this morning with uh, with Jamie and Stoney on 97.1. And I will say, you know, they asked me, and I, I've got this question a lot on Twitter, you know, why in a win now season, how does it make sense to trade Darius Slay and, and why? And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, Darius Slay is still a, a good player. Obviously, the Lions had him cover the number one receiver for opposing teams last year. You know, he was still the best player in that secondary, three time Pro Bowler. So, on, on the face, on the surface, you know, the Lions are, are getting worse in their secondary. But, this situation had just got to the point where a change was needed for both parties. Um, anyone who saw Darius Slay on Twitter yesterday after the Lions had, uh, you know, signed Desmond Trufant, where Slay reached out and said, "Congrats to to Des, but but hopefully, you know, this this helps me get out of town. This, this makes this my trade process go faster." Um, you know, I, I think everyone realized at that point that all right, this there was the, this had passed the point of no return, and that something had to happen. Um, you know, Darius Slay. Uh, you know, he was our Media Good Guy Award winner this year. So I think people um, in this business loved him. They, they loved him in the locker room. Um, I think fans, you know, for the most part loved him. I mean, this is a guy that was out in the community doing a lot of different things. Um, you know, going to basketball games, having pop-up football camps, uh, you know, just always out and about. Um, you know, and, you know, the, the, the fact that the Lions got rid of him, I, you know, that shouldn't, uh, that, you know, that, that doesn't mean that any of that stuff goes away. It, but it just... Uh, his personality didn't mess with Matt Patricia's personality. You know, I think the Lions did see him as a little bit, a little bit as a, a player in decline. That he wasn't playing at the same level that he was a couple seasons ago. They didn't want to give him a contract extension. You go back to last summer. That's exactly what the, uh, you know, what Slay wanted all along was a contract extension that made him one of the highest paid cornerbacks in the game. He 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 signed early his last extension, uh, and therefore as that extension went on, he just it wasn't like he was one of the highest paid players anymore. And you know his agent Drew Rosenhaus said he got a three year extension. For fifty million dollars, we'll see exactly, uh, you know, what that money looks like when the structure of that deal comes out. But either way, Slay got his wish, and uh, that he gets a new deal. He's going to a, uh, a contender, uh, you know. In theory, he goes to a place that he knows. Uh, Jim Schwartz, the former Lions head coach, obviously the defensive coordinator. Schwartz, the one that drafted him to Detroit, and the Lions get some more draft capital. And we go back to what happened with Quandre Diggs last year. This is a team that. You know, as Matt Patricia looks at the roster and Bob Quinn look at the roster, you know, they need, know they need, you know, 30 couple good players to, you know, this is their sort of estimation to, to be, you know, contenders in the NFC, you know, 40 really to be Super Bowl player, uh, you know, contenders. And they didn't have enough draft capital to get that done. So this is why they've set out to, to add more draft capital. Now, uh, just looking at some of these first couple comments in here, um, I understand people are, are disappointed at the, the hall uh, for Darius Slay. Caleb right here says, how does he at least not get a second round pick? I, I thought maybe the Lions could, you know, late two, early three, you know, they ended up getting a sort of a mid three. I think the, 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 the Eagles pick 85 is, um, you know, right at the around 20th in the, the third round, whatever it may, whatever it amounts to. Um, they got a, another five, two. So maybe that's a little bit of, of, uh, of capital that they have to move up. Um, look, I understand they, the Lions wanted a one last year, right? They, they wanted a first round pick at the deadline when they were shopping him around. Uh, didn't seem like there were takers there, but you have to understand in the NFL, right? Not only are you giving up that, that valuable draft capital, but to pay a cornerback 16 million or so a year, whatever, again, that contract comes out to, that's a lot to give up. And Darius Slay is 29. It's not like he's Jalen Ramsey at 25 or 26. Um, you know, this is his third contract. So, uh, yeah, I think there were reasons why, if you look at it from the acquiring team's perspective, the Eagles, the other teams that were in it, the Raiders, so on and so forth, that, um, 
you know, th- why you wouldn't give up more than a third round pick. Uh, and, you know, the Lions got a little sweetener to, to make the deal. Um, again, at the end of the deal, they need to they needed to, to, to cut ties uh, for their good and for, for Slay's good uh, just to make this thing be gone. Um, you know, I don't think Darius Slay was a distraction whatsoever inside the locker room. Players did like him. Uh, his personality, he was the most genuine guy that I've covered. I've said that before. Um, so, you know, I, no one should, should go out saying anything bad about him. But, you know, as I've said before, uh, you know, you can win a lot of ways in the NFL. And, you know, the Lions just want a player with a certain personality, a different personality, someone who embraces football in a different way. Someone like Trey Flowers, who after that Packers game last year had to have the uniform pride off him and, you know, spent a few minutes crying in the locker room rather than Darius Slay, who Slay gives us all every game. I would never say anything different. I don't think anyone should, but someone who's out there trading jerseys, doing that sort of thing after games. Those are the things that rub Matt Patricia the wrong way, and Matt Patricia's trying to build this team in his image, so that all contributed to this trade. All right, let's get to some questions on here. I'm going to scroll through here a little bit, and I'm sorry uh, as I'm looking at this. Let's see, $60 million from Derek. A lot to pay for a guy who's very good but not a shutdown. Uh you know, it's it's a going rate in the NFL. I mean, it's I. what did Byron Jones get, right? I think Slay's still a better cornerback than Byron Jones, a bigger playmaker than Byron Jones. Again, you know, 29 years old, so different stages of their careers. But, um, yeah, I understand why, uh, you know, teams, why the Eagles gave him that money. That's the going rate, and that's what Slay wanted. So whatever team the Lions were going to trade Slay to, um, you know, they were going to have to come up with a deal to make, to make this thing work. Chad says, does this mean the Lions are taking Okuda still in the draft? Look, I've given Okuda, Jeff Okuda to the Lions, uh, both of my first two mock drafts. Mock draft number three will come out this weekend. I haven't even started it yet, but I have a hard time seeing them go anywhere else. I mean, I look, the most realistic option to me still is a trade down from number three to five or six, right? I think the Dolphins and the Chargers both want and need a quarterback and there will be enough momentum for one of those teams to go up and get probably to a uh you know at the end of the day that maybe they they don't feel quite comfortable enough with Justin Herbert both those guys are going to go in the top six picks and the Lions are in the position to deal down you know maybe get let's say they they're obviously they're going to get that pick five or six but you know get a second round pick as well um you know and, and maybe some more sweeteners a future draft pick whatever it may be so I think that's the most likely scenario for the Lions they're going to end up with five of the top you know 85 picks or whatever it is, maybe more. And yeah, they're going to look back on it and say, all right, you know, we, we've got a lot of young pieces to, to build this thing with. Okuda, again, I think that's the most likely scenario. I wouldn't totally rule out Derek Brown. You know, the Lions still need help at the defensive tackle position. Um, you know, and, and both those guys would be long-term uh, investments at the respective positions. So I could see either one of them happening. Um, again, not having sat down to do my mock draft yet. I think I'll probably still go Okuda, but that'll, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll wait to see until, until Sunday or until I sit down to do that. All right, Jensen says, good deal in my opinion. Got more money than Jones. Lions couldn't pay that, no way. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right that the Lions, you know, they could pay it, but they didn't want to pay it. I mean, they, they had plenty of opportunity going back to last year. And again, they saw him as a player in decline. Um, you know, this, this deal makes Slate the highest paid cornerback in the NFL, and that's what he wanted. And that's going to be a short-lived, you know, thing. I mean, he's going to get passed really quick by Tredavious White uh, and by Jalen Ramsey. They're both going to get contract extensions this year. Um, So there's a lot more money coming down. But Slay wanted another payday at this stage of his career, and he got one. And where do I think the Lions go from here? Um, You know, I don't, I don't, I mean, I know there's still some, you know, big name free agents out there, Jadavian Clowney, guys like that. Um, some people have asked me about a Chris Jones trade. Look, if they could land Chris Jones, phenomenal. He's a great player. Um, I just don't see them giving up the draft capital, I guess, it would take to get a player like that. You know, they're, again, they, they want some of these young pieces. They want some of these these cost-efficient, uh, you know, parts uh, that they have in the draft, and they want some capital to be able to maneuver. So I don't I don't know if a Jones trade is realistic, but Chris, Chris Jones is, is one of the best defensive tackles in the game. So if that happens... Uh, you know, kudos to, to the Lions for going out and, and making it happen. All right, Joe says the Lions need to fire everyone. Uh, Joe, look, uh, you know, I mean, shoot, maybe it happens uh, after the season. But, you know, obviously not, nothing is happening right now. And I don't think this trade should make you 
think that necessarily because look, the Lions go back to what I wrote in October. They wanted to trade him. You know, th- this was something that was coming uh, for the past five months or whatever it's been, right? And nothing was going to change that. And teams knew that. And I know they wanted a first round pick at the deadline. Teams weren't going to pay that then. You know, no team was going to give up a two. I mean, that's what the Lions wanted. They wanted a two. They got a three and a five. It's not the same, but you know, it's it's not terrible either. I mean, you know, they the given the return. And now look, and the story that I wrote, I'm going to call this up real quick here so I can reference this. Um, it's at the bottom of the story that I, I filed on the trade. This is the the return for, and I understand why you say you know they should get more because this is the return for other recent you know cornerbacks that were traded. Uh, Jalen Ramsey last year, two first round picks and a fourth rounder from the Rams. That's a pretty big haul, right? Uh, the Baltimore Ravens to get Marcus Peters, fifth round pick and a linebacker Kenny Young. Lions got more than that. Slay's a better player than that. Slay's not not as good as Ramsey, so they're not going to get quite the Ramsey deal. AJ Bouye to the Broncos, fourth round pick. Um, you know, so the Lions got more than that. Again, Slay's a better player. Uh, but you got to take into account, too, that the Eagles had to give him a big deal. So what did Slay merit in a trade? You know, probably a two. Um, but what did they get? A three and a five? You know, a little bit less. But when you throw in the compensation, I think that, you know, that's why it sort of still evens out. Uh, Liz, same as the Antonio Brown trade. I guess you're right, Liz. I hadn't thought about that. Maybe that is a three and a five that the Raiders gave up last year. Uh Different players, obviously, though. Slay, despite what people may think from what he said online, no personality issues. He's loved in the locker room. Um, you know, he just he wanted a fresh start, and he got it. Uh, Rob, with this move, I think there's still a big move coming, more cat-free. They do definitely have more cat-free, but look, these are the big moves that the Lions want to make this year. Kenny Galladay, they're going to re-sign him to a deal. I mean, the, the numbers for receivers are going to go crazy, and it's best to lock him in. He wants to uh, to stay. Best to lock him in this summer. Uh, Taylor Decker, they'd like to extend Taylor Decker too. Decker has, uh, you know, he's on the fifth-year option on his rookie deal. I think it's $10.5 million, something like that. And that doesn't necessarily mean that a new deal will take up more cap space, but um, it could, in, depending on how the Lions structure it. So do they have more moves coming? Certainly, they still need to add another cornerback, uh, whether that happens in the draft or free agency. I think you'll see them still add an interior lineman. Um, I know there was a report out of California about you know Gabe Jackson maybe coming back the Lions' way in a uh, a trade for Slay. Um, you know he's uh, I mean if he's on the trade block, you know he'd fit the type of lineman that the Lions want. Um, you know I think they might go a little low, lower cost at that position, but we'll see. So there's still some players out there. Uh, Demetrius, yep, great move if they can draft the right players. Look, I, I wrote that in my column summing up free agency yesterday that posted this morning. It's all about what the Lions do in the draft. To me, this free agent period, they've made, you know, fine moves. Nothing that's really, um, you know, moved the needle a whole heck of a lot in that regard, I guess. Uh, you know, they, it's not like they're going out and making these splash signings, which I like. I think that's the way to approach free agency. It's fool's gold, but that puts a huge importance on the draft because they really need to add some more blue chip talent to this defense, and they're going to have to do it in those first couple picks. And I said, I wrote this you know, yesterday, that, look, 3 and 35, they need to turn that into three first-year contributing players. Not two, three. So they need to move down from one or both of those picks in order to add some more draft capital and make sure that they have three good starting caliber players that are rookies that they get up high. One of them is going to be a real big difference maker, whether it's at three or five or six. Wherever they pick, they should be able to get one of those top defensive guys. That's why I do think the Lions will feel comfortable uh, trading out of that number three spot uh, should they get the right offers from the Dolphins or Chargers. Uh, Demetrius, great. Uh, we just read that. Liz said $10 million in cap, five of the top 85 picks. We're better off this way. Look, four of the top 85. I tweeted out five. That was just a slip of the finger. It is four of the top 85 right now. But again, I do expect that they'll have a fifth at some point when they trade down from number three. Um, and are they better? Again, you know, we talked a little bit about that, that I'm not 100% sure uh, that that they are, um, you know, and not right now at least, but I do think the move is the right move for the Lions. The The situation with Slay had just it had deteriorated to the point that this this had to happen. And Caleb, did Slay ruin his own trade return? No, no, no. Look, I mean, look, the Lions and the Eagles have been talking about this going back to last October. So um, there's, there's no doubt that, um, you know, this was in the works. I don't, again, I think the return was based as much on 
um, the contract, the type of player he is now. And I know I had talked to somebody um, in the Eagles organization back at the Combine who, who, you know, they said to me, well, he's not the same player that he was in 2017. So, you know, I, I think they realized that he's a three-time Pro Bowler, but, you know, he's not the, you know, the, the top lockdown guy like he was, you know, two years ago. Still, still a very good player. But, you know, I think that's how he was viewed around the NFL. So that's why uh, the return was what it was. I think the comments yesterday were just maybe the impetus to make sure this move happened sooner rather than later. Uh, really robbed the Lions. Haven't made a big move since Marvin Jones and Golden Tate. That's Joe. Uh, look, I mean, uh, free agency, you know, they Marvin, that, that move's worked out for him. Um, obviously, you know, the, some of the other big signings under Bob have not. TJ Lang, Rick Wagner, those guys didn't see the end of their deal, but typically in free agency you don't. Uh, Norm says Quinn got fleeced. <laughs> Who's worse, GM Quinn or O'Brien? Look, to- two totally different things here, all right? Look, uh, Bill O'Brien, the Texans need a GM, right? Like, they're going to do a 30 for 30 on Bill O'Brien's, like, tenure as, like, GM there. Like, they just traded away one of the best receivers in the game. And, you know, last year they traded a, a great pass rusher and he's got no draft capital, so he's chasing his tail there. You know, again, I think um, I understand why, you know, uh, a lot of fans have, have and are angry about, you know, some of the moves that Bob has made. But I don't think this for agency period is what we should get up in arms about. And I don't think this trade is either. I mean, I think it's, you know, again, it's not an overwhelming deal. It's not a bad deal, but the trade was going to happen. And if the compensation wasn't going to get much better, you know, all of the top cornerbacks in free agency are gone. Um, You know, you risk running up to the draft that, Hey, maybe a team decides they don't want to, to trade for Slade. They'd rather, you know, spend a pick on a young guy. I think this was a deal that, you know, they just had to make. It's, it's sort of like this off season, right? It was just, okay. You shrug your shoulders at it. Like, all right, that's what they got. It's not bad. It's not good. It is what it is. Sorry if I if I should have more of a hot take, but that's just kind of how I feel. So, uh, Thomas, I'm not liking all the expats. What happens when Patricia and Quinn are fired? Hey, you're right. A ton of expatriates. There's going to be five at least starting on defense this fall. I include Justin Coleman in that mix since he played for Matt Patricia way back when. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it's a lot of expatriates. I mean, you know, most teams in, in the NFL do that where they get coaches, you know, guys they're familiar with, guys they want. Um, so it's not totally unusual, but it does seem like the Lions have a few more of those guys than, than a lot of teams. You know, the Dolphins, they got a bunch of expatriates too. The, the Giants, they did the same thing. So all these guys are building the same way. And my counter to that would be, look, the you know Bill Belichick, the best coach maybe in NFL history, is getting rid of these guys for a reason, right? They're not worth it either monetarily or on the field. So, I you know, I understand it. And I think there's some benefits this offseason, especially – when you're going to need to hit the ground running when everything starts up in July, because I'm, I'm very skeptical there'll be any off season program, but uh, yeah, overall it, they, you know, they, they make me scratch my head when I see the, uh, the expatriates and Joe says lions aren't going to win this way. Look, uh, you know, as I wrote in my column on free agency today, um, I don't think they're materially better than they were last year at this point, incrementally sure. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. That's why I say they need to nail the draft if they're going to do anything this year because the moves they made so far they're better but they're not they're not playoff better they need to keep Stafford healthy they need to nail a draft uh am I happy with the moves this year Mike I've sort of addressed that a little bit here like I said they're kind of a shoulder shrug more than these are great or these are terrible you know I I think they they just it kind of is what it is so far um does this lock the Lions in on Okuda Matthew I did address that I don't know if you were on when I addressed that sorry I'm just scrolling down these things here um Turn my volume off on my computer. Uh, again, I think it's pr- still the most likely scenario. I've thought that all along. I think Okuda, for the positional value, uh, for what he brings as a player, for the style that he plays, is an excellent fit. But I wouldn't rule out Derek Brown. Isaiah Simmons, I think, still could be in the mix too. But I- I'd put him third. I'd rank him third out of three. Uh, Mike, yes, the Lions could grab another freezing cornerback. And in fact, I think they will. I mean, they look, you're not going to go into the – uh, to the draft thinking that your top three cornerbacks are Desmond Trufant, Justin Coleman, and Amani Oraye. And then, hey, we're going to get, uh, you know, Jeff Okuda. And then what if Okuda isn't there for you, right? Then all of a sudden you, you, you're leaving yourself extremely shorthanded at the position. So I do think the Lions will add another cornerback. I don't have a list in front of me of what other cornerbacks are, are available at this time. Um, so I can't give you any, any names of, of potential fits. 
Um, maybe Ronald Darby is still out there. Did he sign somewhere? He's a former Eagle, so just sort of making the connection with him and Corey Unlin. Um, but whoever it is, it's not going to probably be at a Desmond Trufant price, though they do have that room. I just don't know that there's many cornerbacks left that'll command that money. But I think it'll probably be, let's say, a Rashawn Melvin type, right? That's a uh, you know a guy that started for you, is serviceable, but you know you can dispose of him at the end of the season too. Do I trust the organization will make good draft choices? Look, Dan, when you're picking top three in the draft, uh, you're going to get a player that everyone in the league thinks is a consensus. You know, look, there, there's five, six blue chip players a year, right? And I think where the Lions are picking, you're going to end up with that kind of player. So, yeah, I think they will hit this first round pick, you know. Um, let's see what happens in round two. I mean, those picks are going to be extremely important. But whether it's Okuda or Brown or Simmons, whoever it is, um, I think you'll walk away from the draft being like, I like that guy. I like their first round pick. Like they hit a home run there and they can get that guy at three. They can get him at five. They can get him at six. So that's why I'm not worried about who they take in the first round. I think that player will be an immediate impact player for them. Uh, signed Flowers last year. Yes, Trey Flowers, Rob, if I misspoke, uh, Trey Flowers was a big free agent signing last year. They set the market there. You know, I think sometimes you, um, you know, I say free agency is fool's gold and it's never great to spend. You know, I think there's two reasons you spend, right? One is you're a piece away and you think that guy is going to be the, the one that puts you over the top. Or two, you're really trying to mold that culture, new coach, new locker room, new fit, everything. And they saw Flowers as that guy. And that's why I think you, you saw them spend that money and why it was okay in my eyes to spend that money on a guy like Flowers, even though, you know, the, the money that they paid him uh, outlandish in, in some ways, you know, uh, when you consider the sack production. Um, but, you know, I... I just kind of, I thought that was a, an investment that they had to make was worth making, especially given where they were coming off the 2018 season. Uh, Joe asks, what did Flowers do last year? Uh, played well, uh, I think. Sorry, I got my daughter walking out back here. Uh, sorry, behind the, the my video here, sitting in the office, work, perils of working from home. Um, and as for Matt Patricia's image in the NFL, his defense when he was in New England, um, yeah, look, he's still thought of as a pretty bright coach, right? And, uh, and defense is his his thing, his baby. Um, so, you know, I think it's, um, uh, you know, that's what he's known for. Obviously, he's got a lot of work to do on defense because they've been so bad on defense the last two years. Um, if you mean reputation as in, you know, how people around the league view him, there's a lot of people that are, uh, you know, I, I, look, I, I wrote this today. I heard from one agent who said that, uh, you know, there's some former Lions players out there who didn't like their experience here and, and you know, were saying sort of bad things that, that scared some people away. Um, so I think there is that hurdle to overcome. But, you know, the flip side would be look at the expatriates guys that are coming back to play for him. You know, now they know what they're getting into. They know what they want. The Lions know those guys. Um, you know, so I, I think there is, and, and maybe it depends, you know, what position too. Uh, maybe you have a harder time wearing some, uh, you know, skill guys uh, I guess an offense or defense because those are are typically some of your more um, you know the guys that that are a little more I don't know needy that's probably not the right word but you know that's the reputation of a lot of those guys at least um, whereas you know the guys in the trenches are thought of as more the you know the the worker bees so uh, you know and I would throw Amendola in that uh, that mix too so um, you know those guys are. I think that's why those guys maybe have been attracted to, to Matt Patricia. You know, you heard Mike Daniel say they really, you know, meshed and he, he loved how he talked football and those sort of things. So, uh, all right, Demetrius, let's, let's move on. Great move. I can see two in L.A. close to home and family. Absolutely. Hey, I think, uh, you know, the, the Chargers need something. They need a quarterback, most importantly, and they would like a face of the franchise heading into a new stadium and in L.A., and that would probably work for Tua. I could certainly see that move working out for them. Um you know, them coming up to, to get to a, at number three. They're, look, the Lions are going to have options, right? Because one of those teams, now maybe some of this is up in the air because of what, you know, this world has turned into right now where two has got to work out next month and who's going to be able, nobody's going to be able to attend really and how do you get medicals? And so there are some other question marks about his health that are unique to this year. But ultimately, I think um, Tua and Herbert will both be top six picks and one of those teams will like one of those guys so much more than the other guy that they'll be willing to move up. The Lions in number three are going to be in the driver's seat for that. 
because I, I think Washington is going to take Chase Young at number two. Uh, would Lions move down as far as number 10 if the Browns move up aggressively for a tackle? Uh, not happening. Browns aren't coming up to 10 for a tackle. There's you know enough good ones that they should be able to get one at 10. Um, as for the Lions moving down, you know you really have to be careful of how far you move down because if you're in the Lions, you're the Lions again, and Bob Quinn has sort of you know, uh, referenced this before, there's only every year there's a set amount of blue chip players, right? Three, four, five, six, whatever it is. It's a very small amount. The Lions are in a, a, a rare situation where they can land one of those guys. Um, and if you move down to 10, you're probably missing out on that. So everything that happened last year went all for naught. You go down to six, you can probably still get one of those guys, right? Two of the quarter, three of the quarterbacks are going in the top six. Chase Young, you know, you're still going to get a really good defensive player. You know, maybe you still even get the guy you really want because a team takes an offensive tackle um, or, or they pass on your guy. But I would be careful about moving down to 10, and I think the Lions would too. Steve says, Isaiah Simmons, please. In the mix, but again, I would put him three of three just based on uh, positional value and need and you know, kind of where they are after free agency. You know, their linebacker core is set. I know Simmons can be a, you know, safety too, but I think defensive tackle, still a need. Cornerback, obviously still a need. Those are the two um, best guys. Uh, Rob, I think you responded to the comments here about Trey Flowers. He was their best edge player last year. He was an excellent run defender. I know only seven sacks, um, but, uh, and that, Joe, that's you talking in there too. Um, but he, he was their best defensive player last year. Got off to a slow start. Was coming off shoulder surgery, um, and I think that had him a little timid to begin with. But um, he played well as the season went on, and I think he was about what they expected. They didn't expect a 15 sack guy; they expected a, you know, a worker B leader, a good run defender. You know, got some pass rush, pressured the pocket, and I think he provided those things. Uh, 10 million more in cap space. I don't think that's entirely true. Oh yeah, no, that's right because that's what he was making ten million. He still has a two point seven million dead cap hit. If if my numbers are right off the top of my head, um, again, uh, I I don't have a target for you. You know, off the top of my head, um, I mentioned Greg Van Roten. You know, I think that's kind of the type of offensive lineman that they end up getting to help fill that right guard spot. Um, but I do think they will sign a cornerback still too that'll take up some of that cap. The big things are the extensions for Kenny Galladay and for. Uh, Taylor Decker, if they're able to get the second one done. Not sure about the second one. I do believe the Galladay one will get done this summer. Uh, Thomas, too many expats. Uh, did we cover that already? Yeah, we covered that one. I'm going to scroll through here, keep going. Um, yeah, they still can sign Clowney, but um, look, if if Bill O'Brien didn't like Jadavion Clowney and you know they didn't mesh for whatever reason and they didn't want to pay him and they traded him and I, I think the same would hold true for the Lions. You know, the Lions have their two edge defenders, right? The two guys are counting on Trey Flowers on the right side, Jamie Collins on the left side. That's how they're going to line up, assuming those guys are healthy, for, you know, 98% of the snaps this year. So I don't think, um, not that Clowney couldn't play or wouldn't have a fit. He, he would. He's a good player. But I don't know that, uh, I don't know that, that that's the right use of, of money for the Lions. Uh, keywords are when healthy. Let's see. It's a good point. Compensation by the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I'm scrolling through all these as we're talking here. How could the Lions move down if Okuda is not the target and they want to see? Look, it, um, Matthew asked about CD Lamb and the receivers. Such a good receiver class. But again, that's just not the best use of the Lions resources at the time. And I think this is it. They will draft the receiver because this is such a good receiver class. Um, but I just they need so much help on defense and yes lamb would be a difference maker but they have their three starting receivers and yes i know none of those guys are signed beyond this year and only galladay probably will be but um i I just don't i don't see anybody outside of those defensive players being in play for him tua would be the only other one that i could see if the lions really thought that he was you know could be the guy going forward so uh and again needing to win now i don't think the Tua thing uh, will ultimately end up being in play, though you guys know how I feel about it. If he's the guy and his health checks out, I would have no problem with him taking him. Uh, Richard, do I think players really want to play for Matty P? Listen, um, I, I sort of addressed this earlier, but I think it was a, a legitimate concern problem in 2018. You know, a lot of the guys that were coming off, uh, you know, the 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 Jim Caldwell regime, they just didn't, the mesh wasn't there. The fit wasn't there, right? And so 2018 was an incredibly difficult year. 
you know, last year things were better. You know, Patricia did take into account some suggestions that his players had a little bit when it came to scheduling and whatnot. And I think that goes a long way. So things were better. Um, were they perfect? No. And you still had guys, Slay being one of them, who wasn't the right personality fit. You know, again, it doesn't mean that they were butting heads constantly or that they hate each other. It just means that they weren't the right personality fit, right? Uh, like, a, Think of it like a dating relationship, right? You, I mean, maybe you just don't get along with the girl, right? And so, you know, she's pretty, she's whatever. You know, she, she's what... She, she's smart. She, you know, she has all the attributes that you want, but there's something that where your personalities uh, clash. And so she breaks up with you or you break up with her. It doesn't work. Right. And, and that's sort of what the fit is like in the locker room. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, these are, they hate each other. They're never going to be able to talk, whatever. It just, you know, the personalities weren't the right thing. And that's why they move on. Uh, Mike, about Jared Davis's fifth year, uh, May is when that decision is due. And I have a hard time believing they're going to pick that option up. Just again, in doing my free agent canvassing this year, you know, some agents had told me that the Lions had sort of told them that they know that Jared Davis has these limitations in coverage. And so I think if that's the case, um, you know, they, they realize maybe the shortcomings he has as a player. I don't know if he's going to be worth, uh, I don't know what the, the number would be. I guess he's not top. 10 or you know wasn't a top 10 pick so the number might be a little smaller but um you know if we're talking 10 12 million uh yeah I, I don't know I don't know that's that's a that's a decision that'll be coming in the next month and a half and just what I heard in free agency leads me to believe that maybe they won't pick that up 16 million for a corner uh was good but not a shutdown again like I said I think that was the the view even from talking to to some somebody with the Eagles um, a couple weeks back that um, he's not playing at, Slay wasn't playing at the 2017 level, but, um, you know, he was, he's still a very good player. So don't, don't dismiss that. You know, maybe he's not Jalen Ramsey, but he's still a really good cornerback. And those are in demand in the NFL. There aren't enough of those guys to go around. You know, he can travel with number one receivers. Sure. He'll have some, some, you know, times when he struggles, every cornerback will, but I think he'll win a lot of those still. And so that's why, you know, he's, uh, you know, the, the Eagles paid him $60 million a year. Uh, Demetrius, he likes the Lions moves a little bit more than me. Uh, but, hey, uh, to each their own, I understand. Like, you know, there's nothing to be angry about. Like I said, you know, I just I sort of shrug my shoulders at these moves. Like, okay, I understand it. I get it. Hasn't made him significantly better. That's what the draft is for. Uh, yeah, Joe talks about the, the Caldwell firing. Look, that we're never going to get over that because, um, you know, until they win games, right? You fire a coach that nine and seven isn't good enough. Well, you got to go better and they haven't yet. And that's why the clock is ticking on everyone. So, uh, Matthew asks about, let's call him Big V, Halapaluda Vadi Vatai Vite. I don't know if I say that right. So we're going to call him Big, Big V. Um, I think low-end starter is maybe right or mid-tier starter at right tackle um you know my understanding right tackle right guard I know he played some left tackle for the Eagles but more of uh you know a right side offensive lineman can play some guard he played a lot of guard last spring I think it was when Brooks was out um you know he's uh you know I heard he was stiff as a lineman um, but he's big. He's sort of the, the type of lineman that Matt Patricia wants, you know, for, for his offensive line. So I think he maybe fits a little bit better than what Rick Wagner was. Um, but, you know, I had uh, I asked somebody in Philly about him, and they told me, you know, he's going to struggle against some good edge, edge rushers. So maybe we'll still see the same problems with Danilo Hunter that we saw with, with Rick Wagner. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think he fits what they want. $10 million, you can get out of the contract after two years. Uh yeah, I mean, I would have rather them personally. I would have rather them you know, seen them spend the money on Graham Glasgow than than Big V and keep him around and, and maybe let Terrell Crosby uh, get a whirl at, at right tackle and, and draft another guy or, or you know sign a um, you know a, a lower priced vet that could help at that position. But uh, you know that's who they you know they again they they wanted to build that offensive line and what uh, Patricia's image what he wants and so you know he fits. Uh, what about edge still haven't addressed it? Well, again, you know, Trey flowers on one side, Jamie Collins on the other, that's, that's who they're rolling with. You know, uh, now look, if Chase Young is there, if Chase Young falls to him, that's a different story than going out and spending huge money on a, a Jadavion Clowney, right? Trey flowers is going to be your right end. Jamie Collins is going to be your, your, your outside linebacker standup guy. Trey could play that standup spot and Jamie can move around. So they still have some options. I'm sorry. Uh, Chase could play that outside linebacker spot. So they still have options if Chase Young was there. 
But outside of that, you know, I don't know that they're going to add a big edge presence. I do think, you know, they, they took Austin Bryant last year. He spent time in the linebacker room. You know, he's the guy that's going to apprentice behind Jamie Collins. Whether he ever gets to the point that he can drop into coverage, we'll see. I'm, I'm you know, I'm not sold that he's going to be able to do that. You know, Romeo Quara still around. He's the backup, you know, right end guy. So um, I think they're largely set there. They don't have a great pass rusher. Uh, and that's you know certainly one of the the things about this defense that uh, you know why why I don't you know uh, like it as much as I like that that wide nine that Schwartz ran right because I I like that pressure coming off the edge but Matt Patricia has won with this defense for a lot of years and so um, that's why he's rolling with it. I mean this is what he knows so again what Caleb what you and I uh, may want in an edge or think this team really needs I don't think internally they they see that the same way. Uh, Ryan, the culture change. Uh, Patricia's still struggling to establish one. No, again, like I said, I think last year was better. Last year was better when it comes to a culture than it was um, the year before. So um, a lot of that was the turnover, bringing in his type of guys, you know, getting rid of guys. Again, there's always going to be people that um, don't see eye to eye with the coach that, you know, want things to change. That's never going to change. That was the case last year. There were guys in the locker room. That's going to be the case this, this coming year. But I think overall the locker room was a little bit better than it was in 2018. Uh, Jensen, could we add a running back? Yes. Look, they still – so Devonta Freeman is one running back that they've been in contact with or, or reached out about. I, you know, I could see them signing a vet like that. Personally, I would rather see them spend – a draft pick on a, a running back because I just I don't believe in paying running backs in free agency some of these these washed up guys um, but Freeman was a guy you remember they had some interest in last year and you know now they uh, have some interest again he's a free agent I could see them adding a guy like that I don't know what sort of impact he'd had but they know they need to have some insurance at the position because of Carrion Johnson's injury history so yes they will add a running back whether it's now you know in the coming days or up ahead in the, the, the draft next month. Uh, could they go DT and cornerback in the second round? Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's some, the cornerback crop is decent enough. I don't know, you know, depending on what happens with, with one again, right? Let's see where they, um, I think the, the strength, uh, maybe not the strength, but I think they, they will be in a sweet spot for defensive tackle early in the second round. That's also why I think Okuda up top makes the most sense because, um, whether it's Net, you know Gallimore from Oklahoma, uh, you know the, the, there's a bunch of defensive tackles, interior linemen from the Big Twelve, um, whose names are just eluding me right now. Sorry, it's been a kind of a whirlwind morning. Um, that I think will go sort of in that you know 28 to 48 range. That the Lions will be in a sweet spot to add one of those guys. That's why I think Okuda up top makes the most sense. Okuda and what he provides over whatever cornerback you're going to land in the second round, I'm not sure that that cornerback is going to be able to step in and be a day one starter. Uh, you know, how early he'd be able to be a rotational player, especially without an off season. I think some of those defensive tackles might be able to, to contribute right away though. So I think that could factor into the mix. Um, you know, in, in again, I, th I think, you know, this is generally considered a, a good cornerback class, not a great one. Okuda is really the only, you know, uh, premier one up top. Um, I know there's some evaluators out there that like that Florida cornerback. Uh, he's not going to make it to the second round, but I think there's going to be a number of guys that go on day two cornerbacks, defensive backs that um, you know could help a team right away. Uh, I talked about the cap uh, splash moves already. Don't see it. I do think they'll have some more moves like they've signed. What about Jerry Davis? How is he still on the team, Kevin? I mean, he was you know one of Bob Quinn's first draft picks. You know, had that really nice year, 2018 where they, they rushed him a little bit more, where he seemed to sort of find his niche. Um, last year, look, he wasn't right. You know, he had the high ankle sprain. He re-injured it. He wasn't right at all. Again, he has some limitations. The Lions know that. They've told agents for other linebackers that they were talking to that, um, and that's why I don't think they pick up his fifth-year option. But he still has a role on this team, no doubt about that. Uh, Derek Clowney, overpriced for the production. I agree. He's never quite lived up to that billing as a top, uh, you know, sack guy. That he was supposed to be coming out of uh, coming out of college when everyone thought he was a generational type player. Uh, Chris, who's the third receiver uh, for the Lions? Kenny Galladay one, Marvin Jones two, Danny Amendola three. Um, obviously, none of those guys is signed beyond this year again. But uh, you know, Kenny Galladay should be. They need to get a receiver in the, the the draft. Marvin Hall still on this team as well. 
um, you know, I think um, you know they're going to draft somebody, and that guy is going to be presumably the guy that's going to be able to take over for Marvin Jones or Amendola in 2021. Um, who do we think they'll go after in the second round? Way too early to, to say, but you know what? Maybe I'm on a lock draft this week. Maybe I'll go to pick number 35. Um, like I said, I got to do one for Sunday, sort of a post-free agency mock draft. So maybe I'll go to 35 for you, John. If I do that, I appreciate you uh, just putting that thought into my head right there by asking me who they're going to go after in round two. That would make sense, right? They got uh, uh, those, those, like I said, those picks are going to be really big for them. So I'm going to do one mock draft this week, uh, post-free agency, and then I think maybe now that this thing is settling down, we'll hear a little bit more about trades. So when I come back with my next mock, maybe I'll incorporate some trades in there, see if I have the Lions going to five or six for Tua. Uh, Derek, yeah, OG, that's another spot. Guard, obviously, um, you know, right the way things are right now, I think Terrell Crosby is the favorite to start at right guard. Um, but uh, again, I do expect they're going to sign a veteran at that position to compete for some time. Could Davis be better as a rush end? Jerry Davis, no, he's not big enough to be a rush end. Uh, you know, I think, you know, using him in that role as a uh, off-the-ball linebacker where they move him around, don't depend on him for coverage, I think that's sort of the, the, the sweet spot for him. Uh, Bob Quinn gave a master class on how to waste 50 million cap space. No, look, I mean, again, 50 million, um, teams can do whatever they want with the cap, right? So I wouldn't, uh, you know, 50 million, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. I, I don't think... I'm just not a fan of spending big money in free agency. Like I just don't think most teams lock up their good players well before they get to free agency. So I don't have a problem with how they spent their money. I just, as I said, it's sort of a shrug your shoulders sort of move to me. Like they haven't gotten significantly better and now they really need to in the draft. Sorry, I'm just looking something up here really quick. All right, so look, I got something here for you guys. Uh, let's see if I have something actually. So contract terms. Nick Williams. I got the, the details on Nick Williams. We're breaking this right here for you. All right. Nick Williams contract, $2 million signing bonus, 4.9 million total guarantees, 2.9 million first year base salary, 4.1 million 2021 base salary, $400,000 roster bonuses both, both years. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah. So that is that's all I got for you on the, the contract front right now. But anyways, I just someone had just sent that to me, so I figured I would uh, I would share that with you guys since you're on here Facebook Live with me right now. Uh, and to to that point about the 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 cap, I mean, look, the Lions spent I don't know what it's going to end up being uh, off the top of my head. Nick Williams is 3.9 million in cap space this year, maybe four, a little over four, given how many games he played, four and a half. Um, he's uh. Yeah, look, they, they spent $15 million or so, I guess, in first-year cap numbers on the, the guys that we know the numbers on so far. So, um, you know, that's not that's good. You want to keep those numbers down. I have no problem with how they spent the money so far. Uh, position groups, low priority for the team now after free. Well, they need a number three tight end. Logan Thomas signed with Washington today, so they still need a number three tight end. Maybe they add somebody like that. I mean, Isaac Nauta certainly in the mix, but, you know, they're not just going to hand him the job. Um, so, uh, you know... I don't. I mean, maybe they sign a back end special teams type receiver, but again, that's not the most important thing for them uh, because they're going to draft one. Derek, I appreciate it. Stay safe with the uh, the Ronan and, and and you know taking everybody's minds off it. Listen, I uh, I was one who said that they shouldn't NFL shouldn't open free agency, but I will say this: this past week has been, uh, you know, I think it's hopefully helped everyone get their mind off what's going on in the world right now, and uh, so maybe the NFL ended up doing the right thing by having free agency go on because. Uh, you know, this is a, a, a wild time, a weird time for everyone. And there's m many more important things going on than football in this world. But the fact that uh, that we were able to at least get a little reprieve from Corona talk. Hey, uh, you know, it's uh, hopefully it's been a, a nice little break for everyone. So and Randy, let's end it on this one. Randy says Lions need to go out and get Melvin Gordon. No, Randy, I, I disagree. Don't spend money on a running back in free agency. It's a waste of money. Melvin probably still has some good years in him. He, he Surely he does. You know what? But he's averaged less than four yards per carry in all but one season, I think it is, in, in his career. So, or at least the last couple of years. So I, I just, I wouldn't spend the money on a running back. That's just me. Um, one of my, you know, thoughts on team building in the NFL. Just like I think if you have a cheap young quarterback and you can spend so much elsewhere, that makes you a better team. I, I wouldn't spend money on a running back. I draft one. I'd let him, you know, I'd play him, uh, run him into the ground as much as I can. If he's good for you, you can you can spend some money to keep him. 
but I would never spend money on a running back in free agency. Uh, and last thing, let's end on this. I, I said Randy's, but Greg just chimed in here. Getting system players where there might not be OTAs is a good thing. Greg, I've said that before. I don't think anything's going to happen this offseason when it comes to OTAs, just given what's gone on in other places in this world and how locked down they've been. I have a hard time seeing um, that there's much football that takes place uh, now through June. So I think when this thing does ramp back up and training camp start end of July or whenever it is, um, I, I think, yeah, you got to hit the ground running, especially if you're the Lions. So again, uh, as I sum up free agency, as I sum up all of these moves, um, nothing jumps out like, wow, the Lions, you know, they hit a home run. They, you know, this was the best, best move. This is such a great signing. It's such a great trade. I don't come away thinking any of that. I don't come away thinking any of it was bad. I think there's good and bad, right? They got older. That's not a good thing. They got familiar players. You know, that's a good thing in a year like this. Um, you know, they made incremental upgrades. That's fine. They didn't spend a lot of money in free agency. Didn't waste it. I, I see that as a good thing. You know, they traded away one of their best defensive players in Darius Slate. Not a great thing, but they do have more draft capital, uh, which they should be able to help their roster with. So all in all, um, you know, I don't know that the Lions are much better than they were last year when Matthew Stafford was healthy. And there's a whole heck of a lot um, that's going to be riding on next month's draft. If they nail that, maybe they got a chance to be a playoff contender. If they don't, you know, we're probably talking about a new regime next year. But we got a long time till then. Hopefully these moves work out. And hopefully all you fans out there have plenty to cheer, cheer about this fall. Until then, stay safe. I know the coronavirus has everyone, uh, you know, reassessing a lot of things in life and, and just kind of thinking about things. But appreciate you guys taking a minute to join me on here and for following us on Freep.com all free agency, all, all season long. So you guys have a good one. And uh, thanks again. Dave Burkett, Freep.com.